Good evening, everybody. My name is Pastor Daniel McKee. I am an associate and youth pastor of Lighthouse, and it's my privilege and honor to bring to you a life-giving message. We're going to pick up in our series, Anxious for Nothing. This is part three. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick shout out out there. Thank you for all the text messages and the emails. Uh, if you could do me a favor, if you enjoy this message, share it or uh, and subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for all those encouraging uh, words. So we're going to pick up part three of Anxious for Nothing. And so we're going to start every message in this series by declaring our scripture, which is Philippians chapter four, four through seven. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You're ready. Get your preacher voice on. Let's declare this in our living rooms or wherever we find ourselves uh, this evening. Ready? Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, over the last few weeks, we've looked at this passage with, through several vantage points. We focused on the Lord being near. When Paul pens this, he's saying that Jesus is near during all the hard times in your life. And we talked about prayer and petition and thanksgiving. Prayer is simply conversation between you and God. Thanksgiving is a posture where we thank God for all that he has done for our lives and petitioning means to ask specifically. So in order to have the peace that surpasses all understanding, the Apostle Paul simply gives us a pattern, a pattern of thanksgiving, a pattern of prayer, and a pattern of petitioning. And so we talked about that. Last week we talked about what do you do when you're anxious? What do you do when you're anxious? Well, here's what you do. You identify the noise. Where is the anxiousness coming from? You humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and you cast your cares upon him. That word cast means to, to let go and don't get it back. And so we cast our cares and then you pray for the peace of God in that situation. So you identify the noise. You cast your, you uh, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God who cares for you. You cast your cares upon him and then you pray for the peace that surpasses all understanding to flood into that situation. And listen, you do it as many times as you need to do it. <laughs> we talked about the scale. Uh, if, you're, if you're high in anxiety, you're 9 or 10 on that scale, or you're 1 and 2, as you begin to pray uh, and uh, petition God, that peace will flood into your life, and you will find yourself living life with so much less anxiety and fear. And so tonight I want to pick up in verse 4, the Apostle Paul says this statement. I love it. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always, I say it again, rejoice. Have you ever gotten advice uh, from someone that didn't really heed their own advice? And maybe you had a friend that said, you know what, I have some study tips on how to do good on this exam, but their grades aren't so good, right? Or maybe somebody says, I have this great financial plan, but they don't have any money. Or maybe there's someone that is, you know, uh, hey, this great workout plan, you should do it. But it doesn't look like they've been into the gym in a couple of years. Have you ever, have you ever gotten advice from someone like that? Uh, here's here's uh, my personal, uh, my personal uh, uh, perspective on this is I take advice from people that have been through it. Like, for instance, if you have 2% body fat, uh, tell me your workout plan. I'm listening. Uh, if you have a ton of money and you know how to invest well, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. And maybe you have a 4.0 and you're nailing school and you have a great study habits. I'm listening. Uh, why would I listen to the second group of people and not really listen to the first group of people? I'll tell you why. Because their insight is based on real life situation. They've experienced the pressure. They've experienced the struggle. They've experienced the persecution and they have insight on how to be successful in their field. And I want to encourage you tonight, when you're looking for wisdom and insight, listen to me, it's important to discern the context and the validity of the truth offered. Now, why do I say all that? 
I, this is one of the reasons why I think Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7 is so powerful. The Apostle Paul wrote this epistle while he was on house arrest. Now, if you don't know anything about the Apostle Paul, he is an apostle. It's a sent one. He was sent by God to preach the gospel to the ends of the world. And he finds himself unable to do what God had called him to do. And does he complain? No. Does he worry? No. Does he have a legitimate reason to complain? Yes. And does he have a legitimate reason to worry? Yes. So what was the difference between the Apostle Paul and maybe what we're struggling with right now? What's the difference? I want to bring it back to one word. The Apostle Paul had a different perspective. He had an eternal perspective. He had a perspective of praise. So when he pens in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always, I say it again, rejoice. He is saying that statement from a perspective of experience. And perspective simply means how you view something. The Latin word perspective means to look through something. One of the things, if I can encourage you uh, to do tonight in this situation, in this time that we live in, I want to challenge your perspective. Do you have an eternal perspective? Are you looking beyond the fear and the anxiety to see the promises of God that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus? Are you looking beyond the struggle to see the joy on the other side? You see, the Apostle Paul understood this. Matter of fact, he pens this in Philippians chapter 1, verse 12, under house arrest. He says this, Now I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it's become clear throughout the whole palace guard to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. You see, Paul didn't write, My dreams are over. It's done. I'm finished. Why am I here? He didn't say I'm stuck, I can't sleep, I can't breathe. No, no, no. Paul's perspective was I'm advancing the Gospels. And he pens in this epistle to the Philippians church. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. The epistle is simply a letter that Paul wrote, but he wrote it from a perspective of praise. And what if I told you, that when you have a perspective of praise, you will encounter, you will experience, you will discover the power in praise. And I want to suggest to you tonight that your breakthrough that you desire is probably not going to come in a church service or in a conference or at a youth camp. The greatest breakthroughs that you have and I have are probably going to happen in hard seasons. It's probably going to be in the tough seasons. And what I want to suggest to you tonight is that your perspective in those tough seasons is going to largely determine the direction of your life. Are you going to have a perspective of pain? Or are you going to have a perspective of praise? The choice is yours. The choice is mine. I love the Apostle Paul. If you read in the book of Acts, you can see his ministry journey. In Acts chapter 16, one of my favorite accounts of the Apostle Paul is when him and uh, Silas get arrested. You see, Paul is on his journey to preach the gospel to all the world. And this lady begins to follow him. And the lady that is following him has a spirit on her that gives her the ability to tell the future. She's a a fortune teller. And so Paul is on this journey and this fortune teller uh, that is possessed by this spirit begins to just cry out and shout in in the apostles, Paul's ear. I'll I'll, I'll tell you what she says. She says this in Acts chapter 16, verse 7. These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you to be saved. And so day after day after day, This woman just begins to shout this in the Apostle Paul's ear. And so she has been uh, receiving a bunch of money for her ability to to see the future, to be a fortune teller. And so after days, the Apostle Paul begins to get perturbed. He, He gets aggravated and he casts the evil spirit out of the lady. And so now the lady is free, but she doesn't have the ability to fortune tell any longer. 
And so now all the money that she was receiving is no longer there. And so the people that are, are, are around her, they, they uh, take Paul and Silas, they seize them, bring them to the authorities and say, these people are causing all kinds of problems. And what do the authorities do? They flog them and beat them with rods. It's interesting. The Bible says they were beaten with rods and they were uh, beaten severely and placed with strict orders and they put them in the inner cells and they fastened their feet to stalks. Isn't that crazy? I mean, they're locked up. Now, just imagine this with me for a moment. Paul and Silas haven't done anything wrong. Matter of fact, they cast an evil spirit out of somebody. They've done good. But yet, they're arrested and beaten severely and thrown into prison. And what did they choose? You know, I think to myself, did they, did, they had the opportunity to choose the perspective of pain, didn't they? What did they choose? Well, uh, verse 25 tells us about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and all the other prisoners were listening to them. While they were in prison, they were praising God. They were praising God for not what God could do for them, but for who he was. I want you to catch that tonight. The power of praise is released in your life and in my life when we understand that we're praising not because of our outward circumstances, not because our season is good, but we're praising God because of our covenant relationship with Christ Jesus. We're praising him for who he is. You see, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. He is the good shepherd. He is the light of the world. He is the vine dresser. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the faithful one. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise if things are going wrong. He's worthy of our praise if things are going right. He is worthy of our praise. And the power of praise is released in your life and in my life when we begin to discover that. And the Apostle Paul understood that. And when he writes that in the epistle of Ephesians in chapter 4, he's saying, I've been there and done that. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. I want to suggest to you this evening that your breakthrough is on the other side of your praise. That the, the key to your breakthrough is found in the rejoicing. And in Acts chapter 16, verse 26, this story suddenly has a shift. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And all at once the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. If this verse doesn't give you hope, I don't know what will. Two men beaten and locked, praying worshiply, worship, and suddenly things change. They caused an earthquake, folks. The foundations were shook and prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Do you know that other people's freedom are on the other side of your power of praise? That maybe, perhaps, if each and every one of us, all followers of Jesus, began to rejoice in this tough season, that things would begin to shift suddenly and chains would begin to fall, not only off our lives, but in the lives of others. People's freedom are on the other side of your breakthrough, on my breakthrough. And so the Apostle Paul had the perspective of praise. He knew the power of praise, and he knew that praise was on the key to his breakthrough. So tonight, I just want to finish up with a few questions. I wonder if you could just bow your head and close your eyes tonight. I'm so glad you've tuned in. I'm so glad you have a keen ear to the word of the Lord for you tonight. I just want us to spend these next few moments. Let's, let's have a moment with King Jesus. Let's, let's, let's uh, uh, listen to maybe what he wants to adjust in our lives. And I'm just going to ask a few questions tonight. Maybe you're uh, here tonight and, and you're, you feel stuck. You feel discouraged. Maybe you're anxious and fearful. I want to encourage you tonight that maybe the Lord wants you to shift your perspective, a perspective of pain to a perspective of praise. 
a perspective of worry to a, a, a perspective of, of freedom. Maybe he wants you to look beyond the situation and see the eternal significance of where you are. And if that's you tonight, I'm just going to pray for his grace to help you. Lord, I come to you tonight. I just thank you that you are so, uh, your desire is to help us. You are a Lord that is near. Help us change our perspective during the season that we find ourselves in. Lord, give us the grace to see things how, how you see them. And maybe you're out there tonight and somebody shared this and, and you just find yourself, man, I'm anxious. I wonder how I can get free from it. And maybe you've never given your heart to King Jesus. Say, he is the Prince of Peace. I mean, if you're anxious this, you need to know the Prince of Peace. And in John chapter 3, verse 16, says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. God loves you with an everlasting love. He wants to be uh, with you. He wants you so much more. Uh, uh, the Bible says that you didn't choose him, but he chose you. And the gospel is so easy. It's so simple. You see, Jesus did for you what you couldn't do for yourself. He died for your sin. But he didn't stay in the grave. God raised him from the dead. And if we would believe in him, we will not perish, but we will spend everlasting life with Jesus. And the Bible is simple. It simply says, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that he died and God raised him from the dead and that you will be saved. So maybe you're there tonight and tonight is your night. Maybe it's tonight is the night that you're going to accept Jesus as Lord in your life the first time. Or maybe you're just rededicating your life to the King of Kings in this season. Lord, I thank you for all those that have responded to your message. And I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Thank you so much. Um, have a great week, and I look forward to wrapping up this series next week. God bless you, and peace be with you.